Hello guys, my name is CTK and today I'm going to review the recent Legend of Korra video game that came out a few weeks ago. Bear with me as I've never done a video review for a game. Before I get started, this game does contain spoilers of book 1 and 2 of the series, so if you haven't seen them yet, watch this after you have. As you've probably heard already, there was a lot of hype up to this game. BIG HYPE! Because Platinum Games, developer Bayonetta, Vanquish, Wonderful 101, and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance have taken their A game to help bring this license together. So how does it stand? After all, since the game's release, game critics have trashed it big time, with GameSpot being the biggest contender giving it a 3.0 and IGN giving it a 4.2 out of 10. However, fans think otherwise because they're enjoying the game way more than expected. And as for me, well, I'm about to give my point of view now. Legend of Korra is a beat-em-up style game that has Korra, the lead character, pulling these kick-ass moves through her forms of bending, which are different elements she can use to attack. You're given two attack buttons, which you can either spam non-stop, or you can switch between both. Holding down the attacks, or holding out her chi, will bring stronger attacks. The more attacks you pull off, the longer the combos. However, this being a Platinum Games title, countering is possibly the biggest thing to beating levels. Countering forms core a blocking attack in slow motion, followed by a quick time event button that needs to be pressed to unleash a bigger strike. And believe me, countering is necessary for this. You start off the game with no bending abilities and you have to unlock them progressively. I'm afraid your bending is blocked, Avatar. But when you see Korra beat up an Equalist with her bare fists, believe me, you'll be cheering too. Extra abilities can be unlocked and bought through the shop and equipped her battles later. Later on during parts of the game, Korra will call out her big polar bear dog Naga, where the game essentially just becomes tempo run. As far as difficulty goes, yes, this game does get hard. Very quick, even on normal difficulty. Were you expecting something else from a platinum game? As I stated before, countering and dodging are the two key elements that will help keep you alive. If you're on extreme difficulty, buy the healing factor and upgrade a talisman. Sounds good, right? Now it's time for the unfortunate flaws of the game. It's pretty clear Platinum Games was under a tight budget and schedule to get this game finished. And it shows at times. It starts with the lack of big main characters. Besides Korra, you're pretty much just looking at the same enemies over and over again. In fact, Republic City seems to have nothing but Korra and enemies. Janor only comes in to talk to Korra for big battles, and Mako and Belen are barely even around. Asami doesn't even exist in the game. They do, however, reprise their roles when they actually get to sleep. I would have said the story earlier, but there doesn't seem to be much of one. You meet a mysterious guy who summons Equalus and spirits to fight you. His big bad approach is that he's been gone for thousands of years, and now he's trying to take over the spirit world and destroy Korra. If it seems like a very cheap way to get a story together, it is. Are you alright? <laughs> the Naga stages take the biggest hit halfway into the game as they become really frustrating, to the point where you actually have to do two of them in a row in level 5. The big problem that game reviewers had was that after you equip an item, it doesn't return if you lose the level, which makes the game more difficult than it should be. However, they are only talking about certain temporary items and talismans. There are items that stick with you no matter how many times you lose, especially ones that make the game much easier to manage. The boss battles also become anticlimactic as you're fighting the same bosses. The majority of the enemies are just palette swaps, which in theory makes sense because they all have different attacks, but it never changes up after a while, and you will eventually figure out their patterns. The game itself is very short, clocking in at only about 3-5 to five hours. The replay value comes from the extreme difficulty, unlocking all the upgrades, and the pro bending mode. Which, the pro bending mode, while it sounds awesome in theory, it becomes very annoying that the AI mostly picks on you and your teammates just kinda stand there and take the hits. Visually, the game looks awesome. The cell shader look works for Korra, and seeing the spear world in game form looks very appealing. Her combat animations take the spotlight here, as they never felt glitchy or awkward in any way. Cutscenes tend to be hit or miss, in which they are a little choppy, they do have the same amount of detail as a regular episode. And audio-wise, while it is weak in the amount of dialogue recorded for the other characters, Korra has a big role, and Jeanette Vardy reprises her role as the character and does just a wonderful job. All the music comes from the show, which was already doing well for this game thanks to the track team. 
All in all, it's a great game for the $15 price. So while the critics may hate it, I'm with the fans on this one. It's a game you definitely need to try out. The Legend of Korra is available on PC, Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon. Yeah.